Now let's have a quick look inside the combustion chamber itself. To maintain a realistic simulation, we discretize the chamber into layers, mixing layers and reaction layers. Each of the mixing layers is modeled using thermolip tanks. I'll show you this very quickly. Each tank here simulates a layer inside the combustion chamber. And the reaction layer is again a chemical reactor. This way of modeling attempts to capture how combustion really takes place inside the boiler. A word about NOx. You may have noticed from the reaction blocks that there were no nitrogen oxides in the results. Due to the complicated nature of these chemical reactions, and because of our purposes here, it was unnecessary, so we modeled only the fuel NOx in a separate block. It is calculated based on the temperatures of the different layers. Now let's go back and see how we use this model to test our optimizer. At the simplest level, we have the process model and we have the controller. The controller is actually composed of several components. It first acquires the data from the model, which we prepare by filtering, removing false measurements and calculating additional signals, if any. We then calculate the process model on which we will base our predictions. Using the process model, we optimize and determine the actuator values for the manipulated variables that will lead us to the optimal set points. We then control if our calculated actuators are valid and that no boundary conditions are violated. Finally, we write the data. This modular structure allows us to design, test, and verify the units individually against the model. At this stage, all of the testing happens on the same computer. This is what we refer to as model-in-the-loop testing. Once the initial design is tested and verified, we move on to hardware-in-the-loop tests. The data communication system is now introduced, and the plant model and controller now communicate via Pi server. The model and the controller are loaded into different computers and connected via Pi server. This allows us to test the actual hardware connections between the server and the controller exactly as they will be in the power plant. We can also test at this stage scheduling issues, real-time operation, and so on. This is the hardware in the loop test. It simplifies uh, the process of on-site installation because the exact installation of the optimizer is the same in the hill test as it is in the power plant. When we bring the controller into service, basically the power plant replaces our power plant model in the setup. So the final building block of the optimizer is the user interface. The operator needs an interface to turn on and off the different modules keeping an overview of the measured values, assigning weights to up the optimizer, and so on. So we reach the last major goal, which is a user-friendly interface. Because of time constraints, I'll only show you a quick overview of how it looks. The interface offers a lot of functionalities, but at the top level, the user is able to keep track of the major control variables. In the main area, it offers a view of the manipulated and measured values, as you can see, it is visually built in a similar manner to how the actual plant is built. This gives the operator the look and feel of the real plant. As you can see here, the eight mills surround the combustion chamber. For each of the mills, we can view and or force the manipulated variables. The optimizer does not have to run automatically if the operator does not wish so. So that this button here turns the optimizer on so that it runs automatically. There are also different tabs, tabs to plot and follow selected variables, others to assign other parameters such as weights for the cost function. For instance, the operator here in this tab has the ability to look at the detailed view of the goals over a selected period of time. That concludes our overview from the solution. Now let's look at the results. In the earliest phase, the optimizer runs an advisory mode, where no automatic optimization takes place. Then, for the first closed-loop operation, we adjust the parameters and settings so that the optimization leads only to soft interferences with the boiler operation. After that, planned test scenarios are carried out. In essence, the complete functionality is switched on step-by-step, step, validated and fine-tuned on the way. Then we need to set up workshops to instruct and train the personnel to get them accustomed to the new system. 
Only after the above is carried out can the optimizer be put to work in full-fledged operation. Now let's take a look at how the four goals fared, NOx, CO, oxygen, and air fuel ratio, and the overall efficiency of the power plant. First up is nitrogen oxide emissions. The gray lines represent the distribution of NOx emissions when the optimizer is not active, and the red lines when it is active. If you recall, the goal was to keep NOx and CO just below their legal limits, while the overall excess oxygen is reduced. So the optimizer was able to significantly reduce the variations in NOx values, and keep it close and stable to the legal limit. The amount of time NOx levels cross the legal threshold decreased from 6% to 1% of the time. Stable NOx means stable and more complete combustion. Carbon monoxide, on average, decreased by 20%. The percentage of time CO levels crossed the legal threshold decreased from 5% of the time to 1%. This indicated significant improvement of combustion quality. Already in the first couple of weeks up to after putting the optimizer on automatic, there was around a 10% reduction in excess oxygen. The reduction was not only in the mean oxygen use, but also in the standard deviation. We can see this visually here. The gray points are a lot more scattered than the red points. Lower standard deviation points to a more sta a stable combustion operation, and lower oxygen levels mean a better lambda. Here is the improvement in efficiency. You can see that the overall efficiency increased by 1%, and that the standard deviation from the mean decreased. This indicates also, again, a more stable operation. Now, 1% might not seem that significant, but because of the size of the power plant, it is when one looks at it from a financial standpoint, which we will do in a bit. Finally, here are some of the financial results from the first years. Because of the improvements in efficiency, at the lower end of 1.1% improvement, coal usage per year dropped by around 18,000 tons. At 30 euros per ton, that meant savings from around 500,000 euros per year. More efficiency also meant excess oxygen levels were reduced, and consequently less CO2 was emitted. Carbon dioxide certificates trade anywhere from 13 to 20 euros per ton. The reduced CO2 emissions were around 20,000 tons per year. This adds up to a sum from 260,000 to 400,000 euros. Finally, before, because of improvements in slagging and less maintenance, there were less days lost to repairs. A typical power plant has an opportunity cost of 500,000 euros per day. That is the price of electricity to be delivered per day. This measurement is a little bit harder to gauge and measure, but we'll leave it at an estimation of around 10 days per year the first year. The bottom line was, after the optimizer went into full operation, the development costs were won back in less than a year. Here's finally a summary of the results. We improved efficiency by 0.3 to 1%. We reduced oxygen levels from minus 5 to minus 10%. We reduced NOx and CO emissions anywhere from minus 5 to minus 15%. We also reduced slagging and fouling in the power plant, and there was less material stress in the furnace because of the more even temperature distribution inside the boiler. And most importantly, the development costs were covered in less than a year. What we hope for you to have gotten out of this presentation is this. Using readily available software tools and concepts such as model-based design and model predictive control, some creative thinking, and a small group of engineers, it is feasible and not prohibitively expensive to build optimization solutions for large-scale systems, such as coal-fired power plants, making our world a little bit greener. Thank you for listening.